So taking a look here, our warm up, it says Marcus earned $800 mowing lawns this month. Of his earnings, he plans to spend 18% repairing lawn equipment, put 20% into savings and use 35% for his truck. The rest of the money is going to go into his college fund. So we want to know what is going to go into his college fund. So the first thing that I need to figure out is what percent is going to represent the college fund. How can I figure out the percentage that represents the college fund, Richard? Okay, so savings is not the same thing as his college fund. So I can see where that might be a little bit misleading, but it says it's 18% for lawn equipment, 20% for savings, 35% for the truck, and the rest of it is going to go into a college fund. So I need to figure out what percent is the college fund. So 20% is not the college fund, that's his savings account. So how do I find the percentage that is his college fund. The percent. Mario? Add them all and then what? And then divide it Subtract it from 100. So all of your percentage together should equal 100%. Just doing 800, it has nothing to do with the 800 yet. I'm just trying to find out what the percent value is going to be, like the percent. It's this percent. Okay? So I know that 100% is his money. I know that I'm going to take 18% of it out for lawn repair. I'm going to take 20% of it away for savings. I'm going to take 35% of it away for his truck. And what is remaining is going to be 27%. So 27% is going to go into his college fund. That's the percentage that he's using for college. Okay. Now, knowing that I've got that percent, I can then do my percent proportion. So I can set it up as the is, the part, which is going to represent how much money is going towards his college. That currently is an X value. We don't know what that value is yet. I know the whole is all the money that he has right now, which is $800. And I now know his percentage, the percent that's going to go towards college, which is 27%. Okay, so when I set this up, I'm going to set it up as X over 800 equals 27 over 100. Okay, from here I can then do my cross product. I can multiply 100 times X, get 100X. I can multiply 800 times 27. That gives me 21,600. And then all I would have to do is divide by 100. And I would get that X is going to be equal to $216. So he's going to have $216 that's going to go into his college fund. Okay, sorry, my green is running out. Yes, ma'am? Is it what? Yeah, you shouldn't bully people. I so did not. I said I had to hit the trash can. He said something else. I, I merely laughed. <laughs> All right. Number two. A bag of marbles has 12 blue, 6 white, and 20 red. We want to know what percent of the bag is blue. We want to know what percent of the bag is blue. So in this situation, X, our part, is going to represent the number of blue. How many blue do we have? Uh, 12. 12. We have 12 blue. Now, our whole... Oh, not the X. I don't know why I wrote X. I meant to write part. How do you know? Should they please send Mario to the front office, please? He's on his way. Thank you. Okay, so our whole, we need to add up all of them in the bag. So we have 12 blue, 6 white, 20 red. We need to add all of those together, and that's going to come out to 38. So we have 38. That's our total. That represents our whole. 
and then we're trying to figure out what the percent of blue is going to be. That's our x value. So we're going to do 12 over 38 represents x over 100. 12 over 38 equals x over 100. We can then do our cross product to solve. So we're going to have 38x is equal to 1200. Our last step would then be to just divide both sides by 38. And then we're going to get x is equal to approximately 31.6%. 31.6%. All right, number three, Jess got three questions wrong on a 25 question test. What was her grade? Guys, your grade, your grade is based off of the percent what? The percent you got right. When you see that you got a, a 90%, that means you got 90% of the questions correct. So I don't want to focus on what she did wrong. I want to focus on what did she do right. If she got three questions wrong, shh, how many did she get right? Uh, 22. 22. So if she got three questions wrong, she got 22 correct. If I take 25 and subtract three, she got 22 correct. And that's what your test is based off of. I need you guys to stop talking. It's rude. So our part represents 22. Our whole represents the 25 for the questions, and we want to know what her percent is, what's her grade. Okay, so we're going to set the proportion up as 22 over 25, and that's going to be set equal to x over 100. Then we can do our cross product. We multiply the 25 times the x and get 25x. 22 times 100 gives us 2200 and then we'll divide. So when we do 2200 divided by 25, we get a grade of 88%. Okay. Problem number four, Tim ate 80% of his Halloween candy. If he ate 36 pieces, then how much candy did he originally have and how much does he still have left over? So he ate 80%. That's our percentage. He ate 80% of his candy. We know that's our percentage. 36, does 36 represent the part or the whole? Is 36 the part or the whole? The part. He ate 36 pieces. Did he eat everything? No. No. We don't know how much candy he originally had. So this represents our part. This represents our part. The whole is what's missing. That's what we're trying to identify. So we're going to set this up as 36 over x is equal to 80% over 100. And then we can do our cross product. So we'll multiply 80 times x to get 80x. We'll multiply 36 times 100, get 3,600. And then we'll go ahead and divide both sides by the 80. Okay, so x is going to wind up coming out to 45. So this is how many he originally had. 45 pieces. That's his original amount. How do I figure out how much he had left over? Subtract what? 45 and the 36, right? I'm going to take that 45. So this is one answer. That answers how much he originally has. Then I'm going to take that 45 and I'm going to subtract the 36 that he um, ate and that's going to leave me with nine pieces. Nope. Okay. So those are your two answers. Guys, if you can do this warm up, these are similar questions to what's going to be on your test. If you can do that warm-up, you should be okay with some of the questions for your test. All right. Yeah, it's not the whole test. These are just a few questions. Similar. Similar. Not exactly the same, but similar types. All right. Flip it on over. Percent of change. 
Percent of change, we have new minus original divided by original times 100. This is the process of finding the percent of change of a problem. Meaning, when you are taking a value, so if I'm looking at you and I'm going, hey, okay, your first test score, you got an 80. And then when you redid it and you did your corrections, you went up to a 95. I want to know what's the percent of increase that occurred there. What percent did you increase by to go from your original score to your new score? So the way that we're able to calculate that, it's called percent of change. You take whatever your newest value is, subtract whatever your original was, then divide that difference by the original. And of course, as always, we multiply by 100 because we're trying to convert that into a percentage. Now, you'll note right here that it says, if you have a percent of increase, then that means you're going to have a positive change. You are increasing from the original to the newest value. Okay, from your original to your new, you'll see an increase that's happening. If it's a percent of decrease, you're going to see that there's a negative change. So when you subtract your new and your original, you're going to get a negative value. That means that you had a percent decrease. Your original went down to the new value. Okay? So let's take a look at these examples here. For problem number one, it says in 1970, the average cost of gas was $1.30. In 2023, the average cost of gas is $2.95. So we want to know what is the percent of change to the nearest whole percent. Please make sure that you understand that when it's asking you to round, you need to make sure you're rounding correctly. If it wants a whole percent, is there going to be a decimal? Yeah. No. Okay, the nearest whole percent means that there is no decimal value here. So what I need to do is I want to first identify what is my new, and I'm going to highlight my new in pink, and then I want to identify what is my original. I'm going to go ahead and highlight my original in the green. And of course, as always, like I said, we multiply by the 100, so I'm going to go ahead and show that casing in blue. So based off of this problem, which of these values, $1.30 or two ninety-five? dollars which one of those is my new value, my newest? Cardin? $2.95. That's my newest value for gas. That's going to be the two ninety-five. dollars Okay? It says in 2023, that's our newest price, isn't it? That's a newer price than it is from 1970. 1970 is an old price, okay? Old, original value. So there's our original, $1.30, because it took place in 1970, okay? So when we identify those things, again, you want to make sure you know what are your originals, what are your news. So our original value was the $1.30, Our new value is the 295. So all you're going to do is plug it into this problem up here. You're just going to take in parentheses 295 minus a dollar 30. Close the parentheses. Divide it by your original, which was a dollar 30 and then multiply that by 100. Guys, you don't even have to do step by step. You don't have to go, oh, well, I need to do parentheses first, and then I'm going to divide, and then I'm going to multiply. You don't have to do that. You can utilize your calculator. You can utilize your calculator and type it exactly as you see right here. I can type a fraction button. I can type parentheses, 2.95 minus 1.30. Oops. Close my parentheses. Go down to the bottom of my fraction. Put 1.30. Get out of my fraction. Type times 100. Okay, I have the exact same thing written here as I do written here. Hit enter, and there's going to be my percent. Okay, it says 126.923, and it just keeps going. 
okay? So we're going to get that it's approximately 126.923, keeps going, but again, I want the whole percent. I want the nearest whole percent. So what would I round this to? If I'm rounding this value to the nearest whole percent, what is it going to round to? 127. 127. When you're rounding, here's your whole numbers, guys. That's your whole numbers. So you're looking at the number that's directly behind it. I'm looking at this 9. This 9 is going to tell me to round the value up. That 9 tells me I need to round my next number up. So that's where I get that 127%. It's a 127% increase. Why are you so concerned about the time? All right, James bought a DVD player for $280. Now it's on sale for $220. We want to find the percent of change to the nearest tenth. This time we're rounding it to the nearest tenth. If it's nearest tenth, how many decimal places is nearest tenth? How many numbers behind the decimal is a tenth? Hassan? One. You'll have one number behind the decimal place when it's to the nearest tenth. Okay, so again, we're going to identify what our new value is. Which one of these represents the new value, 280 or 220? Fatima? 220. It's on sale now, right? Now it's on sale for 220. It originally was 280. So there's our original was equal to 280. And our new is equal to 220. So we're going to take 220. We're going to subtract 280. Then we're going to divide that by 280 and multiply this answer by 100. Again, you're going to get a negative, which means that it's what kind of percent of change? A decrease. Okay, so if I type this into my calculator and I hit enter, it's going to come out to a negative 21.42857. It's just going to keep going on. Now again, I want to round to the nearest tenth. Here's my tenth place value where that four is. I need to look at the number behind it. The two, is it telling me to keep the four or round the four up? Keep. I'm going to keep, so I'm just going to put an X over it because that means I'm not changing anything. So my final answer is going to be 21, negative 21.4% as my decrease. Okay, for problem number three, you have an original cost and a marked up cost. So they're already telling you what your original is. They're telling you what your newest value is going to be. You went from $30 to $37.20. We want to know what is the markup rate. So we're just going to take our new value, right? This is our new, $37.20. We're going to subtract our original value of $30, then divide by the original, divide by 30, and multiply by 100. That's going to give us our rate. Our markup rate is 24%. Our markup rate winds up being 24%. So now they want to know if your original is $25, what will that make your markup cost be? Okay, so if it's $24, what's the markup cost going to be? So for here, we can just set up a proportion. I can set up a proportion that says, hey, $30 over $25, 37.20 over X, and do my cross product. 
it's already set up like a proportion for you. That's the nice thing. I can do 30 over 25 equals 37.20 over x and then do my cross product. That would give me 30x is now equal to 930 and then we would just have to divide both sides by 30. And we'll get x is equal to $31. So if the original cost was, cost was $25, the markup rate is going to be $31, or the marked up cost is $31. Okay? I want you guys to try problem four on your own. And then also try problem five. Notice that for problem five, the percent of error, it's very similar, just different wording. And instead of parentheses, what are these values? What are these on the ends called? Absolute value. So it's very similar, but instead of it being new minus old, it's an estimate minus an actual. And then you're taking the absolute value of that subtraction and then dividing by whatever the actual value was and multiply by 100. That's just called percent of error, but it's a very similar process. I want you guys to do four and five on your own. Not right now, just wait. For problem number four, you should have gotten 28.57% as your rate of change. Your rate of change was an increase. The, uh, uh, the new value was 36, so that was the new cost. Last year, the old cost was 28. You do 36 minus 28, divide that by 28 and times it by 100. You get 28.57 and then the 1, 4, and all that behind it. But you only need to round to the nearest hundredth. That means two decimal places behind the decimal. So we're looking at the 1 and deciding do we need to keep the 7 or round it up. This would tell us to keep, so we keep it at 28.57%. For the percent of error, again, it's an estimate minus an actual, but you're taking the absolute value. So even though 16 minus 21 is going to give us a negative 5, we're going to take the absolute value of it and get a positive 5. When we divide by 21 and multiply by 100, we get 23.8095, and it keeps on going. But we want to round to the nearest whole percent. So that means that we're either going to keep it at 23 or round it to 24. This 8, which is directly behind it, tells us to round up. So we're going to round to 24%. You have a Delta Math loaded into Google Classroom.